mentioned earlier Paul Ryan at his press conference today fighting back finally on this whole idea that the Republicans want to shut down the government, that the Republicans love shutting down the government because the Republicans don't want welfare checks to go out. Republicans don't want food stamps to work and Republicans don't want the poor to be taken care of because Republicans are mean spirited and extremists, all this. And usually the Republicans don't fight back. They figure there's nothing they can do. And whenever there's a government shutdown, they're going to get blamed for it. In fact, they have a habit of not fighting back for so long because they're just resigned to the fact they're going to get blamed that they end up giving the Democrats everything they want to stop a shutdown from happening. But now there's a new sheriff in town. His name is Donald Trump, and he's not putting up with it. And this is inspiring other Republicans to join him on the battlefield. And the Republicans, as I mentioned, have come up now with a very effective message in this whole government shutdown business as they turn the tables on the Democrats. So you want to put the military on the shelf for a while? All you care about is 800,000 foreigners? You don't care about the United States military. You don't care about American kids. All you care about is 800,000 foreigners, the Dreamers, the DACA kids. Democrats are not used to this. Little Dicky Durbin, not used to what happened to him at the meeting in the White House. They're used to Republicans caving. They're used to getting away with lying and misrepresenting what Republicans say. But there's constant pushback now. And as I say, it's inspiring from the White House and it's inspiring other Republicans. Here's an example Paul Ryan and the tactic they have settled on. They continue to hold military funding hostage over unrelated issues and deadlines that don't exist. Now they are threatening to shut down the government altogether over these unrelated issues. It is just unconscionable. Our men and women in uniform need our help. They need these resources so they can do their jobs and do it safely. Don't take my word for it. Here is what Senator Schumer himself said in 2013. Let me read you this quote. This is from Senator Schumer, quote, we believe strongly in immigration reform. We could say we're shutting down the government until you pass immigration reform. It would be governmental chaos. Close quote, Chuck Schumer, October 6, 2013. This strategy is governmental chaos. I could not agree more. Right. It just nearly guess what Chuck Schumer says. They want to shut down the government. They want the chaos because the Republicans traditionally get blamed for it. And the Republicans traditionally accept the blame for it. It's a win-win for the Democrats. So here's Paul Ryan firing back and saying, you guys want to shelve the military. You want to shut down the government altogether over unrelated issues? Over 800,000 foreigners or illegal immigrants, whatever you want to call them. So we'll see. The deadline is about 36 hours from now. And we'll see what happens. I want to grab a phone call, squeeze it in. Norm in Worcester, Massachusetts. Great to have you on the EIB Network. Hello. Good afternoon, Rush. How are you? Just fine. How are you? Oh, it's great to have talk with you. We've been on the same frequency for over 25 years. I go all the way back to the gurgling cod with uh, Ted Kennedy. The gurgling cod. <laughs> oh, yeah. After my first trip to Boston, I remember that. Boston's a great city. Hey, a couple of things. First of all, you mentioned uh, the book by Brent Baer on, uh, on Eisenhower, and I've been reading that, and there's so many analogies to Trump and what Trump's going through today uh, with Eisenhower. And Eisenhower had his first cabinet meeting, everybody, or not cabinet meeting, but meeting with uh, the, both the Democrats and Republicans, and he brought out some of the issues they talked about during the campaign, and he was told right away, the hell with that. We're, we're not interested in what we promised in the campaign. We have an agenda, and uh, this is what we're going to do. Uh, <laughs> And, and he was shocked, and I think that's pretty much what Trump is going through. Uh, they all committed and promised uh, to border, uh, to taxes, and, and didn't do any of it until the pressure came on. Do you think this uh, S-Hall thing is blown over? Do you, do you think I mean, they, they tried to sandbag Trump with that? How do you think yeah, that's here's, a, here, here's a great point on the S-Hall thing. If, if whether he said it or not makes no difference, the fact that it was brought out, it was brought out on all liberal networks. It never would have reached there. People would not so have. That's it. That's that he's issue. exactly right. Yeah. It shut down the entire Democrat plan with one question and one word. That's exactly right. Before we get back to the phones, I have a Trump soundbite on the government shutdown. This was this morning outside the Pentagon. 
Trump went over there, talked to military leaders, and had this. It's audio sound by number one, and he had this to say. You see what's happening with respect to jobs. You see what happened yesterday, Apple, and now it was just announced that they're giving each employee a lot of money. So our tax cuts and our tax reform has turned out to be far greater than anybody ever anticipated, and I'm sure the Democrats would like to blunt that by shutting down government. But again, the the group that loses big would be the military. We'll see what happens. It's up to the Democrats. Did you hear this little mangy reporter out there? Mr. President, Mr. President, are you responsible? If there's a government shutdown, are you responsible, sir? We hate your guts, by the way, sir. Do you know that? We think you're a reprobate. We think you're evil. You, we wish you would die. We wish you got a heart attack like CNN says you're going you, to. Are you responsible? We'll see what happens. It's up to the Democrats. Screw off. And with that, we go back to the phones because we got Justin here in Wareham, Massachusetts. You're next, sir. Great to have you with us. Hey, Rush. How you doing? First time in my lifetime. Nice to finally talk to talk with you. Um, I guess I have a two part question. Um, if in the event of a uh, government shutdown, what would that mean for the American people? And the second part is, if they want to shut down, what's stopping us from just saying the heck with you and hiring someone else to do their job or electing somebody else to do their job? You know, I love two part questions. I love two part answers. My favorite two-part question, why do men wear shoes? First part of question is why. It's a great question. We've been asking a question why for decades, for the millennia. If we ever stop asking that question, we're cooked, we're finished, because why is how we get our answers. Do men wear shoes? Yes. So your, right. yeah, see, that's how it, so your first question, what does it mean for the American people? Absolutely nothing. If it weren't for the media going nuts, you wouldn't even know that it's happening. The government technically never does shut down. This is this is no different than the Christmas recess or the holiday recess or the Easter recess or the ski weekend vacation recess. I mean, people leave Washington all the time. It may be that certain bureaucracies shut down for a while, but they always get their back pay. If anybody loses their money, if any government employee loses money, they always get their back pay. One, The first government shutdown of note was the budget deal of 1995, uh, Justin, and it was Bill Clinton versus Newt Gingrich. And the government shut down, and the first thing that happened, CNN found the guy that ran the sleigh ride concession at Yellowstone National Park. And they had him on TV, and the guy was going on and on and on about how he couldn't stay in business because he ran the sleigh ride concession that the government was not going to fund and keep the park open, that he couldn't give people sleigh rides. And, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And CNN made this guy the face of the government shutdown. Then they focused on bureaucrats who would not receive the Thanksgiving turkey that some of them get free of charge from the government. Well, guess what? The guy at the sleigh ride uh, concession was repaid for whatever he lost. And all of those government employees that were shut down got their back pay and their Thanksgiving turkey. It just came later. It really is an exercise in semantics. Um, there have been probably uh, last 10 years, 15 government shutdowns. Do you think, can you recall anything dire that ever happened, no, even from the one from 1995, can you remember anything bad that affected you when the government shut down? No, not at all. It is, it is in truth, folks, a manufactured construct that really has, in the modern era, its origins in that budget deal of 1995. And the reason for that was the, the Republicans won the House in 1994 for the first time in 40 years. And Bill Clinton was on TV talking about how he was still relevant, that just because the Republicans won didn't mean he was powerless. And a big, big power fight emerged over this. And Newt Gingrich rolled the dice and insisted on certain things that the president, at the time Clinton, decided to shut down the government over. And 
that's when we began to get stories that school children were starving because the school lunch program was suspended with the government shutdown. It was all made up. It Well, it wasn't made up, but it was amplified. It was lied about. The Democrats had a program where school kids from New Orleans were writing letters to Republicans. Please, Mr. Congressman, I will starve if I don't get lunch. I can't learn when I'm hungry, Mr. Congressman. How could you take money out of the mouths of food out of the mouths of children? It was all manufactured. Now, imagine, Justin, you have a couple of kids that go to school. And there's a government shutdown. That means a school lunch program suspended for a couple of days. Are you going to let your kids starve? And then you're going to go on TV and blame the Republicans for your kids starving, or are you going to find a way to feed them, which is your responsibility in the first place? Right. You just send them to school. It's, it's become, it's become an, an annual, predictable, political exercise that is orchestrated by the Democrat Party. And the, the, the strength of it, the value of it, resides in the fact that the Democrats over the years – have convinced more and more people that life cannot be normal with the government shutdown. They have convinced people more and more that government is the center of life in America, that government is the heartbeat, that government is the pulse. And without government functioning with proper Democrats in positions of power, the country cannot survive. And there have been a lot of young Democrats grown up been taught this and they believe it. Now they're adults and they still believe it. This is why the Republicans never push back against it, because they feel they can't win. So whenever the Democrats in the past have threatened government shutdown, the Republicans cave. They unilaterally cave and and promise us, the people that elected them, that they'll stick it to the Democrats the next time. The next time the continuing resolution is due for renewal, that's we'll stick it to them in March. And it never happens. This is the first time that there is pushback by the Republicans on the government shutdown. This is the first time Republicans have gotten aggressive with it, led by Trump, blaming it on the Democrats. It's never happened, Justin. It's never, well, that's not, there have been Republicans that have tried to, but but they, they, they couldn't break through the noise because they were not president. Trump is president and can cut through the noise. And that's inspiring Paul Ryan to join him. And so their theme now is, The Democrats seem to care more about 800,000 foreign children than they do the American military, than they do American kids. This is an aggressive pushback. And I think that it's working because it's driving Nancy Pelosi literally nuts. Grab soundbite number 26. Pelosi had her uh, briefing, her weekly press briefing on Capitol Hill today. She was talking about the continuing budget resolution. Remember, this is because we don't have even yet budgets. The government is funded what's called a CR, continuing resolution. And in in this way, we're able to beat spending caps that are in the law because they they apply to a budget. A continuing resolution is just members of the House and Senate agreeing to fund the government for another three months or six months or however long they can agree to do it, but always expires and needs to be done again. And when every continuing resolution expires and one is expiring Friday, here comes The government's going to shut down. The government's going to shut down. There have been so many government shutdowns in the last 30 years, and you can't remember one. I mean, you generically. Even the 95 budget deal, you can't remember, unless you missed the sleigh ride at Yellowstone Park. And even after that government shutdown, the Republicans did not lose any seats in Congress. It did not harm them, being blamed for shutting down the government. But you can't convince them. But now there's a new sheriff in town. Things are happening a different way as far as political messaging. And listen to this. I mean, they say Trump's losing his mind. They say Trump's borderline Alzheimer's dementia. You tell me what this is. This is like giving you a bowl of doggy do, put a cherry on top and call it a chocolate sundae. This is nothing. (laughs) This is, you know, the chip, this chip should have been done uh, in September, first of all. Second of all, we wanted... 10 years. We want a permanent chip, which, by the way, saves $6 billion. The Republicans rejected that. Okay, so here's Pelosi talking about a bowl of excrement with a cherry on top. A bowl of doggy do. Put a cherry on top, call it a chocolate sundae. That's what the Republicans are offering here. This is nothing. This is nothing. You know the chip. This should have been done in September, first of all. It was. 
and it's expiring. And I don't even know chip. That's the that's there, there, there's a yeah there's a children's health program that's funded by the way with tobacco taxes. I I, I don't know if that is is the acronym for it. It's it's close. She may not know what she's talking about. Is the point? Unless you know, she, I'm sure she knows what a bowl of doggy do is, and she's enough of that in San Francisco where she lives. So basically, what you have here, led by President Trump, is an anti-shutdown message, blaming the Democrats for it. And the message is. Democrats are putting 800,000 illegal immigrants ahead of active duty military members. That's what this is about. That is essentially uh, what Paul Ryan was saying in his press conference just before noon. That's what Trump said outside the Pentagon today when he went over to the military. And, And every Republican... From now till the end of this battle over this continuing resolution needs to say the same thing, be on message. In fact, they might even want to run an ad. Shouldn't be hard to put together. This is the Democrat Party. They are the anti-prosperity party. They are the anti-security party. They are the pro-illegal immigration party. They are threatening to hold national security hostage potentially costing the economy billions of dollars, forcing hundreds of thousands of federal government employees to go without pay, although they will be paid, in exchange for securing legal protections for 800,000 illegal immigrants. But that's the message. That's what the Democrats want. And they've always gotten their way up till now. They're holding national security hostage, potentially costing the economy billions of dollars, They're forcing hundreds of thousands of precious federal government employees to go without pay. They are disrespecting the U.S. military. All of that in exchange for securing legal protections for 800,000 illegal immigrants, but potential Democrat voters. That needs to be the way they cast this. And, and Trump is, is doing it. I, folks, again, the government doesn't really shut down. Not the way the word implies. It does not close. Entitlement checks or deposits continue. There's not a welfare recipient out there that will not get his welfare. There's not a food stamp recipient that will not get his debit card. There's not a Social Security recipient who will not get their check. There's not one interruption to any entitlement payment to anybody. They do not lock the government, and it does not cease operations. The president gets up and goes to work, and the House and Senate will get up and go to work. It's just, it's a political construct created by the Democrats, aided and abetted and amplified by the media to try to demonstrate Republicans hate government and hate all that government does for people. And only government does things for people in the Democrat world. And so when government shuts down, people are hurt. When government shuts down, people are in pain. When government shuts down, people are locked out of resources and benefits. And that is the lying, stinking political message that the Democrats and the media promulgate. That the Republicans heretofore have felt there was no way they could beat it back. There was no way they could overcome it, so they had to acquiesce to it. That day apparently is over. We shall see.